Hello everyone, welcome to the Java course. In Java, we rely on some data primitives to uh, create some uh, user-defined classes. So we can say that data primitives are the basic data types um, of Java. And now we are going to learn these uh, primitives. Uh, on the table shown on the right-hand side, we can see there are um, altogether eight um, data types which are regarded as data primitives or primitive data types for Java. We can also see the number of bits uh, for each of the data types and the minimum and the maximum values um, of a variable with that data type. So let us see how we can uh, make use of the data types to uh, store some values into a variable. Hmm. The format is like this. When we want to store some value into a, a data primitive, we follow this format. We declare the primitive data type first, and then we give a variable name, and then I set an equal sign here, and then I will uh, put the value uh, to be put into the variable uh, on the very right-hand side. And finally, I would end the whole statement with a semicolon. Literal here means the actual value to be put into the variable. So let us see some examples of um, putting values into the data primitives. Suppose I want to uh, set up an integer uh, with data type byte, and I call the variable a. And the value or the literal to be put into the variable a is, ca uh, is called this value, uh, 112. Um, this value is allowed because it is inside the range of the data type called byte, uh, which is sh shown on the right hand side on the uh, table. So this one is allowed. When we want to um, check that whether the value put in variable a is uh, correct or not, we can print it out. If we want to print out the data primitive, we simply um, surround the variable name A with the parentheses. And let me save it and then run, run it. Okay, the value is 112, which is printed on the console already, shown here. Um, we can try other data types. I give a new variable called b, and b is a variable of a uh, short data type. And the value to be put in this variable b is minus uh, 20,000, which is, of course, inside the, the range of uh, short uh, type um, data and I want to print it out I can simply change it to B save run okay this value can be printed out so this um, data assignment is a valid action suppose I have another new variable called C which is an integer primitive. The value to be put into this variable C is uh, 2 million. Of course, this value 2 million is inside the uh, allowed range of the integer primitive data type. When I print it out, I change it to C instead of the uh, variable B initially. Save it and run it. Okay, this value is printed out. Okay, for another data type, we call it a long data type. Hmm. D is a variable of uh, long primitive data type. 
and the fact that it was this large number. Um, when we want to store a long uh, data type, we have to put the letter L at the end of the number you want to put into the variable. This uh, letter can be a small letter or a capital letter. So it is up to you to choose whether you put a small letter L or a capital letter L. This L indicates that the value to be put into a variable of long data type is really uh, treated as a long number. So I want to print it out by changing the printing statement to printing uh, variable D. Okay, this value can be printed out. So all the zeros can be shown uh, by the printing statement. Okay, uh, the previous four variables are all of uh, integer types. Uh, I mean, uh, we can treat uh, integers in terms of uh, four main data types, uh, uh, depending on the number you want to put in to your variable uh, type. If it is a large number, you can consider using long or int. If it is just a small number, you can consider using short or byte. Now we are going to um, talk about um, the uh, decimal numbers. How can we handle the decimal numbers? We can use uh, two data types. One is called float. Okay, if I want to indicate that the number is treated as a float uh, data type, I have to put either a capital letter F or a small letter F at the end of the uh, literal to be put into the variable. Uh, for uh, visibility or readability, I would use um, capital letter F instead of a small letter F. So uh, variable E would be of float uh, data third primitive type and the value to be put will be uh, this um, number with a lot of um, decimal places. So I, I want to print it out by changing the printing statement to printing it, uh, printing the um, variable E, save it, run it. So you can see that we have a problem with um, floating point numbers. Uh, my number to be stored in E contains um, 10 decimal places, but the print action can allow me to print out only about 5 decimal places. Uh, why is it the case? It is because the position, the position of a floating point number indicated by the float data type is only having about 10 to 9 um, significant figures. So for my original value of uh, 13 significant figures, I can only show about um, 7 to 9 of the um, uh, digits uh, shown on my original value. So for my case, I can only have um, 8 significant figures, which means that the value to be stored would, would not be as exact as I want to. So that is the um, um, constraint of um, using the float uh, prim data primitive type. So we have to uh, make sure that we um, we are able to um, store as uh, store the uh, correct amount of uh, decimal places or significant figures as we wish. S uh, since float data primitive is short of storing more significant figures, we can consider using another data type uh, called double. To make sure that we really want to treat the value as a double value, we can put capital D or small letter D at the end of the literal. Um, now, 
uh, variable f will be storing uh, this uh, value with uh, 22 significant figures. So when I want to print it out, save and run. Um, you see, for a double uh, primitive data type, I can only show about um, 16 to 18 um, significant figures. So even though I use a data primitive of more processing, I'm not able to uh, store so many uh, decimal places. Mm. I can only show uh, about 16 to 18 significant figures rather than uh, storing all the 22 significant figures in the variable f. So we have to notice the um, constraint of using both float and double data types. If we have too many significant figures, um, float can only store about 10 to, uh, sorry, 7 to 10 significant figures and for double primitive type we can store around at most 15 to uh, 18 significant figures hmm. for uh, daily life applications we would usually use int to store the initial data types and if we want to store some um, decimal values, we would usually use double. So we can uh, use int and double for most of our applications. We have two more uh, primitive data types to show here. One is called boolean. It stores either true or false. Uh, we have to bear in mind that all the letters in the true or false literal uh, are all small letters. Okay. So if we want to print the Boolean value out, let me change it now. I want, want to print G. So the value would be true. Of course, if I change it to false, I will get false as the uh, uh, output coming from the Boolean variable. So false is stored in variable G in this case. Finally, we can have another variable data type called char, which means a character actually. I call the variable h okay what does it mean by this um, assignment statement um, character x is going to be stored in um, a variable called h and according to the table a char type has 16 bits so um, this is the um, the convention used in java by using the uh, UTF-16 bit uh, um, convention to store characters. So um, for Java, uh, we have 16 bits to uh, represent characters. We can represent uh, much more characters than we can find on a conventional keyboard. So this is one of the examples of um, storing uh, character coming from the keyboard. I want to store a um, small letter x. So I need to put some more letter x uh, inside a pair of a uh, single quote. Okay, so let me try to print it out by changing the statement to print h. Okay, the value which is a character can be printed out. So I want to say that you can um, use these data primitives to create your own um, data types when you, you want to create your own classes and in essence all other self-defined classes are made up of 
these um, data primitives. So, so that's why we use the word primitive to say that we build other data types from these uh, fundamental data types. And I have to repeat that this kind of uh, action is known as an assignment statement. Um, we want to assign a value, which is a literal, on the right-hand side of the equal sign to the variable stated on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And before we um, put the variable name, we have to declare the data type, which can be any one of the uh, data primitives uh, shown on the table. This is the end of, of the video. If you have any questions about my video, feel free to leave your comments on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.